Hello, Zia. Welcome. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing great. How about you? I'm fine as well. Thank you for being in this interview. First of all, I would like to introduce Zia a bit. Zia is a very successful business person that we also had a chance to work together with. But he's not just a business person. He's also a very successful trainer, a speaker, a coach. He's a very versatile person. And as a lot of other versatile people, he is extremely productive. So I wanted to invite him for this chat as well. But before we start with the question, Sia, could you please tell us a bit, a bit about yourself? What are you doing? Where are you from? What is your experience? Okay. Thank you for the invitation, first of all. Uh, I was born in a village where there is no water, no electricity, no roads, you know, the, the, the village that you have seen in the movies. Thanks to my father, he was a great teacher. I was able to win some uh, one of the top high schools. And then I went to one of the best universities in Turkey and I had a master's degree in London Culture of Management. I have 16 years of professional life. I lived in Dubai. I managed my uh, previous companies, Middle East and Africa branch. And then I returned back to Turkey and I worked as a country manager for company Bayer, you know, the inventor of aspirin. I became their country manager for Turkey. And then additionally, Central Asia, Russia, Ukraine, uh, Southeast Europe, Iran, Pakistan. That was an amazing journey. But sooner or later, you realize that you are in a hamster run when you are working in a salary base. Then I decided to follow my dreams. I quit. And today I have my foreign trade company and I had an academy. Uh, so I have been giving seminars in Paris, in Vienna, in Rome, Prague, Dallas. So up to now, maybe 300,000 people. So this is my journey. So as far as you ask, I can give more information. Yes, I know. But as a lot of professional speakers, you also know how to keep things concise. So my first question to you is a very general question because I think it's good to set the term straight. And when I say productivity, people can have different perceptions, right? So my question to you would be, what does being productive mean to you, Zia? Money. When you say productivity, two things appear to my mind, time and money. We all have limited times and every second counts. So for me, how much does my time work? One of my mentor told me that, Zia, how much money you would like to earn? And we have been discussing. Then he calculated my time per hour. So imagine if you would like to earn a million dollars, if you want to work 250 days. So that means every single day you have to earn $4,000. And if you want to work eight hours productively, so your single hour should cost, uh, should you should gain $500. If I'm not earning $500, then I'm not productive. So productivity is equals time multiplied by money. So that is my calculation. Fantastic. And yes, it's also a lot about different expectations as well. So it can entail anything depending on what you expect from life. And I do, and I'm sure a lot of people do as well, but what about yourself? Do you consider yourself a productive person? And I'm asking this question because a lot of productive people, they don't consider themselves as productive people because it's all about expectations and when you're, where you're at. But in terms of feeling and in terms of the feedback that you're getting, do you consider yourself a productive person? Yeah. <laughs> I can't say that I'm perfect over there, but I think I'm doing good because I have my foreign trade company. I have an academy during which I give seminars. I'm a professional coach. I'm giving coaching sessions. I'm giving mentoring to the member of the boards of some companies. I have my e-commerce business. I have my family, my friends, my hobbies. I'm spending time for personal developments and I have some special training groups. So when you consider all these hats differently, I'm managing it properly in a day. So yes, I believe that I'm productive. I'm not super productive, but I'm fine with it. In the beginning, you said I'm not perfectly productive. So I'll, I'd like to ask you a follow-up question. Is there a perfect in this matter? I don't believe that there is no one is perfect here. So, and we should not follow the perfect one. So fine, good, very good is better than perfect sometimes. Yeah, I also agree. I always say there's no perfect, there's always better, even if you're the best in the world on that as well. And Zia, tell me, how are you productive? Because I think with productive people, they understand their whys, like why do they want to be productive, what motivates them in life, and how in terms of methodology or 
a day that you follow, your weekly planning, monthly planning, just in a nutshell, how do you become a productive person? I love the quote from Nietzsche. He says that a person who has a why can, can uh, handle any obstacles. So my name is Zia. Zia means to light, to enlighten. And I have a mission to impact 1 million lives. So together with the help of all those 1 million people putting one brick, I would like to establish a school under the name of my father. So whenever I woke up, I'm thinking that to whom I can touch, to whose uh, life I can impact today, and then I can put one more brick to my father's uh, school. So once you have a why, then you always consider what can I do for it? Then you ask, start to ask questions. If you ask questions, the answer comes, how can I do this? You know, then I say, I can read, a, I can write a book. I can give seminars. I can uh, have corporations, people like you to impact other people's lives. So it always starts with a why, then things follow uh, afterwards. That's what uh, I believe. Exactly. I also like the speech of Simon Sinek, start with why on that matter as well. And I'm sure you know about it as well. And Definitely. let me ask you finally this. Yeah. If I would come to you as a person who would like to get coaching or as a person who wouldn't feel that he's being perfect productive or he's not reaching his potential, but wants to do so. And I come to you and say, yeah, these are my problems and I want to be more productive. What should I do? And I know the answer would depend from person to person, but generically speaking, what would you recommend to this person? Uh, as I told you, I'm a professional coach, uh, ICF certified, International Coaching Federation certified, and several uh, of my uh, customers co come for uh, because of this. People are not good at time management because people are not aware of how they spend their time. It's like money. I mean, you spend it for sometimes nothing, sometimes productive. So the first thing I'll ask you, may I kind of ask you to write down how you spend your regular day, every thing that you spend more than 30 minutes. So, you know, lunch, breakfast, dinner, you know, going to do work, what you do and so on. And suddenly they realize that it's the total sum is like uh, sleeping is over there. Five, six hours are missing. So where is this gone? stupid social media, sometimes exaggerated social spending time over there, TV episodes and so on. So first they have to be understand that where they are spending their time for nothing. So then we make a new plan. Sometimes we put some limits to their social media. You know, like if you are sort of addicted, you know, we put like five minutes each four hours. So eight o'clock, you can reach five minutes, 12, five minutes, four, eight, midnight, five minutes. You have to limit yourself. Secondly, you need to find your biological time. Some people are very productive in the morning. Some are noon time, some of the evening guys. So you have to first know your biological time, not the real time, where you are really productive. And then many of the people are not aware of the prioritization. If you allow me, I would like to show what I tell to them to use the Eisenhower matrix. Eisenhower matrix is a very simple but very effective way. First, get you know one A4 paper and split into four. And the first part, write the urgent part. This part is urgent. And this part is not urgent part. Okay, that's great. But how about this part? This part is important. And this part is not important. I always realize that people always love to do the tasks which are mainly not important and not urgent. You know, people love to spend time around this. It's simple, it's easy, they love it. But here is difficult task, big task they have to deliver. And since it seems big, They always try to hide behind there, try to be here and there. So they need to, oops, gun. <laughs> I don't know whether I can do undo, yeah. They need to realize that this part doesn't fit well. The only thing you have to do is the prioritization is here. This part is number one. You have to do first urgent and important. Then 
People again make the second round prioritization. They do the important part. No, I can send a report for six months. It's very important, million dollar business, but it's not urgent six months later. So second part is here. First, this part, do it immediately. This part, delegate. This part, delay, you can do it later. And this part, don't do it, forget it. So many people doesn't prior prioritize how they have to spend their time. So this is called Eisenhower matrix. This is what I recommend the most. Fantastic, I especially love a speech if it's accompanied by tools that I can use as well, which this <laughs> matrix, I also tell it on my trainings, but I don't know the name. I don't know that it was called Eisenhower matrix. So. Yep. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much. I know this, with this topic, we can speak for hours and it's great to brainstorm. But before we finalize, because we, I, don't, I don't want to take too much of your time, is there anything else that you would like to add to tell to our audience here? Yeah. I mean, we have just one life and we have limited time. Every day it's given and taken, like our bank accounts. You know, imagine they put some money. If we don't spend it, they will take it back. So, will you allow them? not to spend that money and the bank withdraws your money? No, but when it is time, sometimes we are not aware of it. So I hope uh, we just give you, a, you know, we just open your eyes. Maybe you look from differently from now on and then you can start to be a productive person. And thank you Perchim for this invitation and for this lovely chat. It's my pleasure, Sia. And your ending point was very good, I think. Most of the things in life, it starts with awareness. So that was a very good point, yeah. And I'm sure people that are going to watch this will benefit a lot from it, as did I as well. I love doing these interviews because I learn new things or I refresh my knowledge on my new things and it increases my frequency. So really appreciate it, Zia. Thank you very much. And I'll see you Thank in another you. video. <laughs> All the best. Take care, Zia. Bye-bye. <laughs>